This episode is brought to you by the Wood Slicer Legendary Resaw Blade, available only at HighlandWoodworking.com. Last time in Part 5, we made and attached the drawer slide supports, milled the sliding dovetail drawer slides, glued up the top, and milled the lumber for the breadboard ends. With the bottom of the top facing up, I'm going to make a groove going down the edge of the top, and I'm going to start and stop a few inches in from each side. And I'm going to do that using a slot cutter and a handheld router. Now with the bottoms of the breadboard ends facing up, I'll do the same thing and create a slot all the way down. And because I'm referencing off of the bottom in each case, both the top and the breadboard ends, they should be flush on the bottom. I milled some material from some scrap wood to a quarter inch thick. Now I just need to cut off one inch sections for the splines. I need to glue my splines to the main portion of the top and I'm going to do that by only putting glue inside the slot itself because I don't want to get any glue towards the outside edge of the spline because that's where the breadboard edge is going to go later. And if you notice, I have the grain of the slot running in the same direction as the top. So when it, the top expands and contracts, the spline will also expand and contract in the same direction. Before I round over each edge of the top, and also before I put the breadboard ends on, I'm just going to kiss each edge of the top with a little bit of hand plane just to get rid of any mill marks. With one of the breadboard ends attached to my vise, I'm going to make a square hole for an ebony plug which will give a nice decoration to the ends of the breadboard ends and will also allow me to hide a screw which will attach the breadboard ends on either end. Using that same process, I made a rectangular recess in the center of the breadboard end using the square hole punch. Now I'm going to pre-drill for some screws on the outermost square holes that we created. I elongated the back side of the screw hole to allow the screw to move as the top expands and contracts. I have an ebony rod that I cut about five thousandths of an inch too big, and I went ahead and pillowed the end of it. Now I need to cut it to size and we'll pound it into our square holes. With the top clamp to my mortise here, I'm going to make a slot in each corner to receive the ebony spline. Now this is one advantage we're having a mortiser where you're moving the router in relation to the wood instead of moving the wood in relation to the router. It would be very difficult to move this workpiece in front of a still router. I'm going to square up the rounded ends of these slots left by the router using a square hole punch. I cut my ebony splines to length and thickness. Now I need to glue them into the core side only so that they can expand and contract within the breadboard ends. The next thing I need to do is remove this excess spline material so that I have the amount of reveal that I need extending out of the side of the top. 
So I have the top upside down on my bench and I'm gonna use a flush trim router bit that's a half inch in diameter. And I've replaced the half inch bearing with a three quarter inch bearing so that I will get the required reveal that I need. Now with the ebony splines out of the way, I'm going to turn my attention to the drawer pulls. And I have a piece of cherry stock that I'm going to use for that, and I'm going to rip off a strip of material for the drawer pulls. And that way each drawer pull will come from the same piece of wood. Instead of cutting out each individual drawer pull, I'm going to flatten this entire piece of stock and then we'll plane it to thickness. With the drawer stock nice and flat and cut to thickness, I'm going to cut it to its final width. At the table saw, using my miter gauge and a stop lock, I'm going to cut each drawer pull blank to length. Before I create the arches on the front of my drawer pulls, I'm going to make a few square holes using my square hole punch for some ebony plugs. In order to create the arch that I need on my drawer pull, I took a piece of plywood and I traced out a, a pleasing arch that I wanted and I cut it out of the bandsaw. Now the one piece that has the convex portion of the template, I'm going to use this to trace out the arch onto the drawer pulls and the concave portion of the template I'm going to use as a fence at the router table later. With a 5 8 inch diameter round nose bit, I'm going to finish the finger recess in these arched pulls and I'm going to use my concave fence to do this. Because our router bit is spinning in this direction, we need to feed our stock in this direction as we follow the contour of the concave fence, being careful not to get our fingers in the uh, way of the router bit. I'm going to trace a quarter inch radius at the corners and then we'll just remove this with the sander. I pre-drilled my drawer pulls into the square plug holes we created on each end. Now with a little bit of glue underneath the drawer pull, we'll screw it down. In order to attach the top to the base of the desk, I'm going to use these metal hold down clips that go into a slot and the rails along the desk. And in order to make those slots, I'm going to use my trusty biscuit joiner. And it's probably one of the very few times I actually use a biscuit joiner. I attached the top using those metal fasteners that I talked about earlier with a few screws. And I also applied a few coats of a mixture of tongue oil, varnish, and mineral spirits in equal parts. And I am really happy with how well this turned out. So this is the first part that you watched and you didn't watch parts one through five. Please go back and watch those and maybe watch part six again. I think you'll enjoy it a lot more. And uh, if you get a chance, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can also follow on Twitter and you can like my Facebook page. And that way you can stay up to date with everything Garage Woodworks. Oh, if you go to the Garage Woodworks store, you can buy some really cool stuff like uh, t-shirts and mugs and hats. And those purchases help support the show. Thanks for watching, guys.